Hey everyone, and welcome to 121 in Flux. I am Peter, that is Connor. We talk about movies on this show. Typically older films, we, you know, we work our way through some old stuff, we check out some classics. Sometimes if there's a new film coming out, we'll do a, you know, if there's a sequel coming out, we'll do a, like the, the previous films in the franchise kind of thing. Uh, but one of the things we've been doing, actually, since we started this show, this, this review show, is we have been working our way through the original Japanese Godzilla franchise. And this is going to be our next entry in that. This is going to be the sixth film in that franchise. Six already. Yeah. It's called Invasion of the Astral Monster, a.k.a. Godzilla vs. Monster Zero. Uh, a lot of them have two titles. You just kind of have to get used to it. But Invasion of the Astral Monster seems like the main one. That's the one that everyone's kind of decided on, I think. Yeah. For whatever reason. But uh, that seems to be the one that everyone's sat on. So we're going to talk about this. We'll start uh, spoiler-free, I guess. <laughs> Can do. Yeah, we'll do a little spoiler free. We'll give you a warning before we get any spoilers. And yeah, so, of course, uh, we've covered the other five Godzilla movies. I'll make sure there's a link in the in the corners popping out around about now for, uh, to go and access them. So, we're definitely viewing into things are getting a little bit goofier and wackier as we go. This one, you know, had a few things. And, mm-hmm. you know, the last one had someone visiting from Jupiter that helped us fight. Ghidorah, which introduced yes. Ghidorah as a villain. This one, we had astronauts get out into space and discover because they've discovered a new planet that's hiding behind Jupiter called Planet yes. X. So right away, we're doing insane height, and it, obviously you could say, yeah, but a giant lizard who has atomic breath is already high. Sure it is, but before that was the only high concept thing in a realistic world. As we've moved on, we're adding all these other things. We've got Jupiter princesses. Yeah, and- space travel's fine. Yeah. Well, it's not the space travel I'm saying is high concept, it's the finding a hidden planet that's behind, behind Venus or uh, Jupiter all this time. I mean, both of them, frankly. Sure. Uh, at least space travel, you know, space travel was a thing at the time. Uh, in, in, in limited capabilities, sure, but to this extent... They hadn't got to the moon yet, but, you know... <laughs> like it, it, it was, it was, it was on track. They were, they had to be in space at this point. Not in Japan yeah. specifically, but like you know, the world had to be in space. Mm. But regardless, so the plot of this one is that they find this planet, Planet X. The two astronauts go there. Two of our main characters, uh, Glenn and Fuji. Uh, Glenn being a white character, which is just kind of unique in the series, because up until now everyone's been Japanese. So yeah. uh, interestingly, though, he was not speaking Japanese. He was dubbed. In a, he was definitely speaking a different language when he was recording his dialogue. Yes, you can see it, can't you? Yeah. Uh, so that, that's kind of a that, that reminds me a lot of Italian uh, films from yeah. that era. I, I'm willing to bet he's speaking English, and then when they when it came to you know the the American release, they just didn't dub him. They just reverted yeah. to the original audio. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, everyone else will be dubbed, but he'll be speaking English. Yeah, probably. Yeah. I can see that. But yes, yeah, so, so they arrive on the planet and they encounter the the ex people, uh, mm. who make them an offer. They say, "Right, Monster Zero is coming. You have to come down. Monster Zero attacks us. We need help fighting them." Uh, and then it reveals who Monster Zero is because it's a bit of mystery. And I'm at we're in spoiler free, but I feel like it's so early on in the film that it's kind of weird to kind of hide this. But Monster Zero turns out to be none other than King Ghidorah. And they're like, they call Monster Zero and they want Monsters 1 and 2 to fight him because they've already done it. And that turns out to be Godzilla and Rodan. Although Mothra also helped fight him. Yes, yes. They don't, they, they don't think Mothra was, was that important, apparently. I, I, wonder, I wonder if this is... Maybe there was a reason behind the camera for not wanting Mothra in it. Maybe it's like, oh, Mothra's going to wait to do his own thing in other movies or something. Could be but, as simple as budget. Could be budget. Although I feel like you've already got Rodan with the wings. I, I don't see why... Yeah, just an extra one though, isn't yeah, it? I suppose. Uh, I, I think in plot though, I'm going to say that the reason because they, they know where Godzilla and Rodan are, I'm going to say they just couldn't find Mothra because they they knew where to go and get them. But they basically say we want your permission to come to Earth, take Godzilla and Rodan, bring them back to Planet X so they can fight Ghidorah, and in return, we will give you the cure for cancer. It's quite the offer, isn't it? We'll get rid of those awful monsters that you hate. Well, to be fair, last movie they turned out heroes. They they fought Ghidorah. They, they did, but you know, w- w- one good one good act doesn't make up yeah. for all of it, does it? So very. You say that, but when they get left behind on the planet later, and they're like, "Oh, it looks like they're upset. We're leaving them behind." And I'm like, "Oh, Godzilla and Rodan will be left behind." Do you know, I'm pretty sure they've changed the uh, the Godzilla outfit a little bit on this one. It looks uh, a bit a bit friendlier. Uh, yeah, 
yeah, I could buy that. I could buy that. Uh, so they come back, they make this offer, and of course there's maybe some twists and turns along the way as to what the intentions of the people of Planet X actually uh, want and what, what what they're actually planning. Mm. So I guess I'll ask the question. Connor, did you enjoy Invasion of the Astro Monster? It was all right. Not not enough monster action. The monster action was oddly limited. I, I do think it's kind of weird, this one, how... It feels focused on the monsters for a while because it's all about this deal to like you know bring them to the and planet. Then they're and they're just forgotten for quite a while. But then it turns into more about the humans fighting fighting the the aliens, fight, fighting and, the people. And, and and don't get me wrong, it's not that I didn't enjoy that stuff. There was you know enjoyable stuff in there, but I, I came in expecting some monster fights. Um. I would go a bit higher than you. You said, oh, it's all right. I would say, I liked it. I don't think it's as good as the last two. The last two were really enjoyable, especially yeah. uh, Ghidorah. Th- this one, I think, is a more of a typical standard of the sequels, but enjoyable. That's fair. Um, but yeah, it, it does oddly kind of, like, the monsters are almost an afterthought. Yeah, I, th- I, think, I think I'd enjoy it more in the future. It's just expectations. You know, I was expecting mm. the monsters to, you know, be a bigger part. And it just, it just uh, I was like, okay, this is what this is. It's that readjustment. I need to go, okay, the franchise is shifting to this. And I, I, I think, you know, I knew it was going to get silly and goofy, but I didn't realize it was going to move away from the monsters like this. I don't, I don't think it always does. I think this one was just more human. Yeah. I just, and, I think I just need yeah. to be prepared for that. But yeah, I wasn't. Sometimes it's going to be like that. You just kind of have to accept yeah. it. Sometimes when he uh, tease out the monsters a bit more, uh, I, I, yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I have fun with this one. I, I think, yeah, I like Ghidorah a lot, so I like that he's back and he's like the, the villain again. And I, it makes sense that he was around Jupiter, because remember, he ruined the planets near Jupiter, so it makes sense that he ended up around yeah. there. Uh, so, and I, I, like, I like that stuff. Uh, the characters are not bad. There, there's some fun stuff with, uh, like, the, the, the pilots have got this good friendship, and he's annoyed that uh, this inventor's dating his sister, who are other main characters. Which, by the way, I will say... The actor who plays uh, Fuji was really confusing me because it looks so familiar. I'm like, was he in one of the last movies? Like, is this a character from the previous films coming back? And the last film had a brother and sister dynamic as well. Yeah. So I was like, is this the brother and sister from the last movie? I, I, I don't know. It turns out the reason why I was so confused is because the actor who plays this character was a, wasn't in the last one. He was in Mothra vs. Godzilla as a uh. different character. And he was a different character in the first Godzilla as well, although I don't remember him as much from that one. But yeah, no, yeah, I get, I get, I get the problem. They're reusing the same actors for different characters, and it's making me think, like, wait, am I meant to remember this? Because that's the thing. I'm like, I don't remember an astronaut. It's not like he's just changed his career path and became an astronaut in like, a couple of years. That's not possible. Yeah. No. <laughs> I can't just do that. I like that he's been in half of the movies up to this point, playing different characters. Uh, yeah, uh, and it seems like he's in another one as well coming up. <laughs> so, so uh, they reuse a lot of actors, which makes it really difficult when I because I'm never going to remember the character names in these movies really outside of maybe one or two key characters because they're Japanese names. They're not, they're not as memorable to me. I mean, even so, I think it's the type of movie where you don't necessarily remember the names. You remember what their purpose in the plot is. You remember, yeah. oh, they're the astronaut. You don't think, oh, who is he as a character? Yeah, they're not deep character films in that sense. You're, you know, you're right. It's more about the spectacle and the the threat and in this case the alien conspiracy and yeah. <laughs> whatever else is going on uh so i'll give a spoiler warning here i think uh, just so we can talk a bit more freely about where the the, the alien plot goes so they come back to earth they debate this offer and they decide no we should t- start our peaceful relations with this new planet you know have the, this is our first intergalactic community <laughs> where we have yep. to like work together with people that let's, let's be nice let's give them the monsters and in the meantime, cure cancer. Why not? Yeah, it's a win-win. <laughs> Seems like a nice idea. Seems a bit too good to be true, though. It does, doesn't and it? a couple of the characters do get a bit suspicious. They think, oh, something about something about fishy going on in this. It feels a little bit weird. Uh, the aliens show up. They actually end up already being there. They come out of the water. They've kind of snuck in. Uh, yeah, and they're like, mm, this, is, this is fishy. Because they come out of the water, so it's very fishy. Uh, so was a, that was intentional. Uh, uh, very good. Uh, so they use these tractor beam things to take them up, take Godzilla and Rodan. This is when they first see them. By the way, we've not seen them up until this point in the movie. They come out of the water, fly them back to their planet with the astronauts and their boss. Uh, the astronauts get into a little bit of trouble because they get a little bit uh, nosy. They start sneaking around the base, but they they get caught and they're like, oh, we're just kind of curious, we're nosy. Uh, like, yeah, you broke the rules, but you visit us, so but of course, we'll let it slide. 
one of them sees someone he recognises, and we'll talk about that kind of separately, mm-hmm. that, that side of things, but... So, they give them this, the cure for cancer, on a tape, in this case, which was a piece of polished eye ring painted gold. Yeah, it was really cheap feeling. It, yeah, it looked... Because it looked like it had no way. It looked like, no, this is a piece of polystyrene you've painted gold. That's all that is. You could see the bumps of the polystyrene. Yeah, you could see the cracks and stuff. It was so obvious. And, you know, well, obviously, it's okay, they're on a budget, they're doing this, whatever, but even, the, you know, all the miniatures and the models still look pretty good. Yeah, it's just a box. Just use it's, it. You, it use, just shouldn't be that difficult. Make it out of, like, wood or something and paint it. Or yeah. whatever. Do, do something, anything. <laughs> yeah, it, it just looked cheap. Hell, just just wrap the the piece because it's you know it's tape as in like a you know a big bit of audio tape. Uh, yeah. Uh, just just put it in like a sort of plastic wrap or something and hand them that. Like that would be better than this obvious polystyrene thing. Just give it. Just give them like a metal tin and go. Here it's in here. Yeah, but paint that gold just to make it. <laughs> yeah, sure. If you want to make gold, make it gold. Yeah, Why not? whatever. Uh, but it just it stood out to me so much. But they get back to Earth. They fly all the way back before they try and play it. Uh, they put it in, and it's they actually get into this big, you know, the, the committee, senate hall, whatever it is in Japan. They put it, they play it in front of everyone, and at first it's silent, and eventually the guy starts talking, and lo and behold, the first thing that comes out of the, the tape is, people of Earth, we're going to take you over, you're now ours, this is going to be a colony of Planet X. And they're like, what? No cure for cancer? The doi. Um. Uh... So it's a big bit of stupidity. So that, that, you know, then they evade and they're like, yeah, no, we, we, we've been controlling uh, Ghidorah all along. Which made sense to me because when they actually take the monsters to the planet and they have this fight, we have a fight that lasts a little mm. bit. They, they, they fight Ghidorah and they win kind of easily. And they it, do. It actually makes sense in hindsight now because it's like, no, no, Ghidorah right. threw the fight. <laughs> At the time, I was just like, okay, so it's just Ghidorah's as a threat has been lessened. You know, it's something that you see mm. in sequels in general, anyway, even today. Like, yeah, yeah. whatever they, whatever there was the big deal at the end of the first movie. By the second one, it's just like, eh, whatever. Yeah, yeah, but no. In, in actual case, no, he throws the fight because he's being controlled, and then we get the infamous uh, moment of Godzilla doing his victory dance. I don't know if you enjoyed that. It was stupid as shit, and I loved it. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, I like that. Uh, the fight here is not that particularly great though. I, I did like having it on another planet. I gave it a different kind of vibe, at least. Uh, actually... I, I like that the, the the monsters can breathe in space. Of course they can. Why it's not? not? Well, it's not space. It's it's, it's a planet. It's got, it's got an uh, atmosphere. Uh, I mean, that, that's fair. It just means uh, they can breathe. Our astronauts are still wearing their suits, but you know. Yeah, but they're not humans. No, that's that's, that's true. They're kaiju. You get species who can survive in multiple atmospheres. You you, you do. I, I, I'm sure giant monsters are one of them. Yeah. Why not? Why, not? why, 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 not? No, I don't why are you arguing the biology of Godzilla with me? I don't know. You're arguing, like, he's a giant lizard monster. Uh, yeah, you, I, I, I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> right, so... So they bring all three monsters back. They're using them to like, yeah. If you don't surrender, we're going to unleash the monsters all over the planet Earth. We know Ghidorah's in America, and, and here in Japan, they've got Godzilla and Rodan ready to go. They're just, they've got them sleeping. They're waiting. Uh, but meantime, luckily, of course, so we'll dive into the, other, the sort of the subplot with the inventor, the boy, yeah. you know, the sister's boyfriend. He 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 actually was trying to sell his invention. He's to some, this company, and it turned out the company are actually the aliens that have already infiltrated Earth. Yeah, they've been planning this a while. Which is what, and the reason why they're interested in his device is because his device makes a noise. I don't know what the device is supposed to do, really. You know, what the purpose it, of it is. I can't remember if it was like Lady something. I, it sounded like it was like a rape alarm. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Maybe that makes more sense then. But I think that's what it was meant to be. But the noise specifically uh, kills them. Like they are, they are. Yeah, it just shuts them down. They're susceptible to this noise. It's like a frequency they just can't handle, and. They figure that out in prison, like him and Glenn. Glenn's there because Glenn was dating the uh, the woman who worked for this company, who turned out to be one of the aliens. He saw a copy of her on the planet, and then on Earth, she like sacrifices herself to like give him a message, to give him a bit of paper that told told him about the noise. Yeah, and we, good about, we, it? we have that. So, uh, which you know, I I kind of enjoyed that. Like that, that this whole they've already infiltrated as stupid as it was. It was kind of like goofy. And no, it was. This is it. That now I'm thinking about it. I think I had. More, I'm having more fun 
Okay. Now, like, 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 I, I enjoy what is there. It was, like I said at the start, it was just the expectation of. I mm. was waiting for the monsters. Yeah, no, that's 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 fair. Uh, but they have this plan, so they they, they they try to figure out what this frequency is. Uh, and, or they, they, they like we two two part plan here. One is we're going to pump out that that noise to disable them when we can. And number two, we're going to blast this frequency thing we're trying to figure out that will interrupt the magnetic waves that they're using to control the monsters. They can break the the signal by pumping their own out. Reasonable plan. So you know we get we get all that happening uh, at the end and. They they basically kill all the, the 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 people of Planet X, and we see them like you know dying in their ships and bit, in their bit base. Big casual genocide. Only the ones who are invading. It's not like they've went to the planet and killed everyone there. That's true. This is this That's is fair. this is uh, just this, an invading force. This, this, this is self defense. This is the army they're killing. Yeah. No, you're right. There you go. See, uh, but of course the monsters like break control, like they're, they're awake, and it's like there's five minutes of the movie left at this point, and they're like, oh yeah, now Ghidorah's around on Earth again. This is bad, and then we get the the really good fight. I thought actually with the yeah. three of them because uh, there's some really good double team moves from Godzilla and Rodan to take care of uh, Ghidorah. Oh, it's a it's a fantastic fight. I just wish I'd had more than three minutes of it. My, uh, oh sure, but like what's there is actually really good. Uh, the moments I really loved were. Godzilla like holds the tails of Ghidorah and Rodan flies into the neck. And then alternatively, it started with God- Godzilla. As soon as he realizes Ghidorah is there, he's like, "Oh shit, this bastard again!" And he just dives for him. And then mm. Rodan like flies into his back to trip him up. But my favorite moment, and it's when they actually sort of kind of defeat him at the end, that makes him fly off out the mm. war, is <laughs> uh, actually I think this was in the, the, the first fight. Actually, now I'm thinking about it because at, at the end, it's just uh, Rodan picks up Godzilla. And like sort of throws yeah. him into thing. No, uh, no, the one moment I really liked in the first fight, actually, that I'm thinking about it, I really liked this moment. Uh, Godzilla grabs um, Godzilla, yeah. and Rodan like runs up his back to yeah, it's, to knock it's, him it's over. It's pretty cool, isn't it? It's a really cool uh, little double team move. So it's like you know, because after the last one, there was some cool double and triple team things in the last one, and I was like, oh, is there any left he could do with them? But no, sure enough, they did a couple of fun things here where they they kind of double teamed them. It was it was there fun. Is. I, I I will say as a overall as much as I enjoyed Ghidorah, mm-hmm. is there a point where I'm going to go? Okay, I'm bored of Ghidorah now. Uh, I don't think so because he's not in the next bunch. Like I think it's a few movies now before you yeah. see him. I think it was just two in a row. Yeah, feels like okay. It makes sense from like just when they were making this. Like, oh, he was a big hit last year. Let's put him in the next one. But yeah. I'm pretty sure he's not in the next one. He might be in one or two soon after that. But then you don't see him again for a long time. I, I'm I'm happy for that because like, like I said, I think use it too close together, it loses the effect. Like to the point where, yeah, you know, when they beat him easily in that first fight, I wasn't questioning why they were beating him easily. I was just like, mm. okay, this is just what happens with a threat in movies like this. No, he's in so. in the nineties and two thousand stuff. He's in like a few, but again, they're not always necessarily back to back. Maybe maybe they are condensed, but there's some mm. twists on him as well, though. To Make it a bit more interesting. Mm, interesting. Uh, I, think, I think back to back just highlights it. Yeah. It? No, that's that's fair. Uh, but yeah. So uh, no. So so that was the that was the plot. Uh, I had fun. It was definitely more silly. Like we say, Planet X oh, yeah. and stuff, and like uh, all this magical noise that this guy just happened to make a device of. That it's very convenient, wasn't yeah. it? And and he happened to be already involved with all this. Yes. Yes. Uh, so yeah, there's there's some conveniences like that, but. Uh, it, it was fun. It definitely wasn't as good as the last one, though. Uh, in no, terms of the other stuff, not. like I say, I mentioned this earlier. The, the first fight being on this other planet gave it a different aesthetic. Every, everything about that gave it a fresh kind of look. I thought, like when they, when they go into like the alien base and it's like all these like futuristic tunnels and stuff. Yeah. Uh, so it was uh, just something. It's it's why like I was saying, oh, I was maybe getting a, a, I'm cautious of becoming bored of Ghidorah. I wasn't here. Because like no, this looks different. It's just it's not on Earth. It's it's something yeah. different. Even though it's you know this fight we've pretty much had. Yeah, but it's 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 different somehow just because of the location. Yeah, it's definitely not the last time we will see some aliens involved in Good. in these movies. There's definitely more of them coming up. I, I think even the people of X might uh, pop up again at some point. No, no I'm all, I'm alright with that. Maybe not in this continuity. Maybe when they reboot it for the next. Because you know it's, it splits into. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sections, but maybe maybe it's the next section before they pop up again. But uh, I I feel like they pop up again. I'm I'm not sure. Uh, but no. So so that's uh, uh, Astro Monster. The characters are not, not bad. I I like um, 
The Brawl and Sister don't really interact much, but I like the way the pilots interact with each other. Yeah, they've got a, a really nice dynamic, haven't they? Well, especially when they start suspecting things. There's a great moment when they go back up to the planet and they're, they're watching the fight. They're watching the fight happen. And at one point, uh, I can't remember what he says, but the, the commander of the, the you know, the ex people say, he says something. And there's just this little moment where both uh, Glenn and Kuji just sort of, or Fuji, sorry, uh, just sort of look at each other, kind of like, hmm. Like yeah. just, you can see them there's, there's quite a things. few times where they'll share a glance and it's like they, they both know what the other one's thinking. Yeah. There's quite a few things like that. Uh, there, are, there are some leaps in logic. There are some kind of ridiculous things, like them not playing the tape till they get back to Earth. Like, what? <laughs> didn't, have, didn't have a tape player on, on, the, on the ship, obviously. Okay, sure, but the fact that you played it for the first time in this public forum where there's, like, cameras and everyone can hear it and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was that was a dumb move. Yeah, that was, that was a bit on the odd side. Uh, I did actually, to make a complaint, just stylistically, I thought it was weird how after that scene, it went to this sort of still photograph things of people panicking. <laughs> Yeah, I, I I forgot about that. I wanted to mention that as well. It was like this whole like oh the horrors of war sort of monologue. Yeah, over it's, it's the kind of thing you get in a documentary about a war where it would go to these still photos of all the people like, panicking yeah. in the streets, and, and it like, all what? it almost felt like they had, these were stock photos they had of just other times in Japan, and they just they ran out of money, so it's like oh, let's just put some photographs in of the, these things. Yeah, it was really weird. Yeah, did, did not appreciate that. It wasn't a big deal because it wasn't it didn't last very long, and once it was done, it was like we forgot about it, and it, you know the movie went on. But but as I was watching it, I was like, why is this here? And I was like, I need I want to I want to mention this because this was weird. Yeah, it did feel. But weird. like you say. It kind of ended, and then you forget about it because it's never mentioned again. Yeah, if I want to criticise the finale, not the fight with the monsters. The fight with the monsters, despite being really short and at the end, is it's really good. Great, yeah. Uh, but the the plan before that, when it's just them firing these like, it's it's, it's these. It looks very phallic actually. It's these big sort of dick looking things that, that fire these electric beams for the signal. Uh, there's a big montage of them just sort of turning around and like firing the sparks uh, repeatedly. As the music's playing, you know, as soon as it starts fires, like dun 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 yeah. dun, 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 you it's know, not, it's just not very exciting to watch, is it? No, it, and it goes on too long. It goes on for like a good four or five minutes of just these yeah. shots of these things happening. I, I honestly think there is more of those shots than there is the fight at the end. The probably there probably is, and that's that is a legitimate criticism. Um, so I, I think making the monsters feel a bit more integrated into the plot. Uh, might have felt a bit more like even even as simple as when they're trying to do all this plan stuff. Uh, there's some shots of them like firing missiles at Godzilla and Rodan, but I feel like have the threat, the constant threat of the monsters still trampling around cities. Have that going on at the same time. Make it you know yeah. more active. I think, like I think that. there's one sequence of Godzilla going through a little town. Yeah, he, he steps on a few buildings. Uh, yeah. I, I do like the scene of Rodan using his wings to like blow everything away, and he's like, mm. it's just, he's, you just see like cars going down the street and stuff. Yeah, uh, it, it, it's it's this weird thing where what is there is really quite good. Mm. There's just not enough of it. Uh, yeah. I had a lot of fun with this one, though. I, I, as, as much as, you, like you say, the, the monster stuff is a little bit in the, the low side. The plot is silly enough that I still have good fun. Because there's some later on where I, I, I remember the plots being really boring and then there's not a lot of monster stuff and that's a lot uh, more troublesome. Uh, like I said, this here, it was just expectations. What's actually there is enjoyable. That's fair. That's 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 fair. Uh, but yeah, I, I guess that's it. Anything else you want to you bring up about uh, Invasion of the Astro Monster? Costume designs, perhaps? Um, yeah, the costume designs, like I say, I think Godzilla, it definitely seems to change. It's a bit, bit rounder, a bit softer. Mm. Actually, I was actually meaning the uh, the people of Planet X when I was, that said that there, but yeah, fair enough. Well, I, I, I don't know. I feel like I just it was really noticing it. I think the eyes seemed like moving much more as well. A little bit, a little bit goofier. They may have just modified the same suit because if I remember right, the, I'm pretty sure they've kept the same suit for a long time to the to the point maybe. where you could see it kind of falling apart in some of the movies. Maybe it's, it's like, just a different head. Maybe just, yeah, it may just be a different head. Because it's, it's just the head that I'm, that I'm looking at and going that looks softer. Um, it could just be wear and tear. Uh, it could be because this was like the sixth movie and it might have been the same suit. Like this might just be. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, I don't know. Well. I don't know if it was the same suit from the first movie. Maybe just be the same suit from when they started doing these yearly sequels, but. Mm. Uh, but I, 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 I do, I do remember like hearing that the suit was starting to fall apart, and they had to like, yeah, re, re up this suit a bit here. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's not cutting it anymore. Um, that is, is understandable. Yeah, I, I'm really looking for because the I, the suit gets a lot better for the the eighties relaunch. Oh really? Uh, I, yeah, because because right now I feel like classic Godzilla. It looks great in the first movie because it's black and white and the way it shoots them. 
But then you know, you feel the goofiness of the suit and all the other films after. It's because in the first one, he's always in the shadows. He's just a threat. Whereas in the rest of them, he's you know he's actively fighting things. It's so not it, just it's... that. I think it's also just some of the the actions they have him do. Like I mean, it comes at the fighting things, but just the way he kind of he almost does the sort of martial arts thing where he puts his hands out like that at times for the and fight. And he does a little dance. He does a little dance. He picks up rocks and throws them. The first movie never has him do anything like that. It's never that yeah, silly. It's just walking and trampling. Yeah. Um, Whereas, uh, and so the design feels a bit goofier after that when you just see it. You know, it's broad daylight. He's fighting other monsters. Yeah, it's really brightly lit compared to the first one where it was a bit, you know, in the shadows. Whereas, but it gets a bit more cragglier for the eighties and nineties stuff, uh, and again, and even again, the two thousands, and then, you know, it, it's craggiest for the for the new one that we'll we'll get to eventually. Which one, not, one day? I've not seen it yet. Of course, I'm waiting until we get there. Uh, for yeah. the fun of it. Uh, that that'll be uh, the pinnacle of the journey. Which might incidentally, if we time this right, it might fall around a new sequel coming out. You know, the Godzilla King of the Monsters. It might, mightn't it? It may actually work out nicely that we kind of wrap all these up at the time of the new, the new US film coming out. That could be fun. Uh, but I guess we'll, I guess we'll rate Invasion of the Astro Monster out hmm. of the uh, of ten. I think I'll give it a six. Hmm. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to slightly up. Yeah, I'll say six point five. Yeah. Fair enough. I think I liked it just a touch more than you, but uh, you know, uh, for, for so six is six is enjoyable though. Like six oh, is sure, like, oh, yeah, go sure. ahead, watch it. You'll have you'll you'll all right. Sure. Uh, to, for, for the record, I think I gave Mothra like a seven, seven point five, and then I gave Ghidorah the last one an eight. So this is kind of weird. It's, it's falling underneath those two, but it's definitely yeah. better than uh, Raids Again. I think I, I think I gave the last one a seven point five. Raids Again, I gave like a four. Oh, Ridley, yeah, Ridley game was low. That was like yeah, four I don't, five, I don't so. remember what I gave Mothra off the top of my head. Uh, that was good. I think that was just either either the same as Ghidorah for you, or just maybe like half a point lower. Yeah, it wasn't much in it. I don't think. Yeah, uh, but there you go. So that is the sixth Godzilla movie. Uh, we will be back with the seventh at some point in about a month or so. It, is, it works out about once every month or so. We we do one of these. It's uh, a bit looser because they just slot in where we can. Yeah, yeah, because we we have movies to do for new things coming out. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, but that 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 is that is us. So let us know what you think of this one in the comments below if you have seen it or you're interested in seeing it or whatever. Uh, like, subscribe, all that stuff. Get us on Twitter at mailed underscore fuzz for channel updates. If you want to support the channel, head over to patreon.com slash mail fuzz TV. Uh, anyone who does is greatly appreciated. You get some bonus stuff. You get these influx reviews a week early uh, for as little as a dollar, and then some voting privileges and stuff. Uh, and you know, higher ups. In fact, we should probably mention what the the vote is for uh, this month. Oh, we should. We've not mentioned it on a on a show yet. And, not... and and I I know the theme, but I don't know the films. So this you know will be a nice surprise to me. I'm I, I, sure I kind of let I... Pete just uh, go off on this one. Yeah, I'm not actually sure if I even remembered them exactly. After minute. I'm just going to get them up, just so I don't get them wrong, because that would be embarrassing. Uh, but yeah, so the themes the theme Hitchcock. We're, we're you know the vote this month. You know, so Patreon five dollars have all month to vote. Uh, between four films that are in the, the, the option and the theme is Hitchcock for the month. Uh, partly because Murder on the Orient Express is coming out in November and that's not a Hitchcock film in any way but just the idea of like a murder mystery. We'd already done kind of something similar with Seven that won that vote a couple of months ago so we thought with this one we'd, I'd make it a bit more focused and we went with Hitchcock. So the options for the vote are Dial M for Murder, Rear Window, The Lady Vanishes and Frenzy. So uh, oh. those are the options. So uh, some folk have already been uh, voting. That it's been quite active already. Uh, but if you do sign up and you want to vote, you've got until the end of the month to get your vote in for that. Uh, but there you go. Uh, we should also mention uh, there is an audio feed now for 1.21. Uh, not in flux specifically. It's actually called Mail Fuzz Movies. So if you search Mail Fuzz Movies on your iTunes or your podcast app, you should uh, hit that. And that has this uh, as well as Gigawatts and Overload all in one feed. Uh, just a new thing we're trying. It's not up to date yet, though. Uh, I started from the first episode of Influx, and we've been I've been updating that. Well, I'm, I'm at I'm up till at the end of March for episodes. They're gradually going in, but if you're interested, it'll, in the audio it'll feed, get there soon. Then should be soon, probably within a week. I imagine it's going to be up to date. But uh, if you're if you're interested in the audio versions, uh, by all means, you can check out those. And of course, we should mention there was the the new tier on Patreon as well, because if you're you're here for movies, this is relevant. That, to that is that is true. Yeah, there's a new tier on Patreon. We made a big announcement on Patreon uh, just in the first of the month. Uh, we have a new eight dollar tier, which is called Echoes in the Fuzz, and it is an audio commentary tier. And basically, if you if you you know if you 
pay your $8, you get access to a monthly group commentary, which will have myself, Tim, and, and or Matt involved. You'll also get a solo movie commentary from me, and there's also going to be weekly audio commentaries for Buffy the Vampire Slayer by me. Uh, so, yeah, if, if, if any of that sounds interesting. Uh, Connor's almost making a face because... It's... You, you didn't say it how you normally say it, is all. That That is true. That's because the name of that... like Not that the commentary series needs a name, but it has a name. The name is That Hit Television Show. That is the name of that series. Yes. Uh, so those uh, that, that's all starting in November behind the Patreon tier. However, we did do a solo movie commentary and a group commentary for October, which is absolutely free for everyone. Uh, you still have to go over to patreon.com slash TV to access it, but it's free. You can just click on the, Patre- uh, the commentary tab at the side and you can uh, download them and listen to them uh, with the movies. Uh, the solo ones for Halloween, I did that myself. And then the group one with Tim and Matt with them and myself is for Darkness Falls, which is a really bad horror movie from the early 2000s, which we basically just made fun of and tangented a lot over. But if that sounds like fun, if that sounds like something interesting, those first ones are free. You can check them out, see what they're like, uh, and you can have a look at the, the tier if you're interested. So there you go. There's all the stuff. I should, I should probably plug that at the start, actually. And especially probably should have done. Especially the, the free episodes part, because that, that's the real enticing thing to tell people. Well, there's free stuff you can go and check out. Pretend you heard it at the start. We'll do it next episode. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll try and make a point. I Because the commentary's on you, I'll try and make a point of plugging those uh, for a while. Uh, and then every time there's a new one goes up, maybe plug that then. But... Uh, but there you go, that, that has been this this episode of 121 in Flux. Uh, my cat's jumping up and scaring me a little bit behind me. Uh, but that is, that is us. So thank you once again for watching. Keep watching movies. We'll see you next time.